sarahkbrandis.com, small business marketing made simple for life coaches and authors. This is episode 14 of Solopreneurship Made Simple. And if you're watching the video version of this on YouTube, you'll notice that I look a little bit different today. I've got my glasses on, which I don't normally have, and that's because I'm reading notes on the side of my screen, which I never do. Um, so I don't know how obvious this will be to you if you're listening to the audio on iTunes, um, but what you might hear is a bit of noise in the background because my cat, Iggy, is on the rampage today. She's super bored. So um, distractions aside, I'm going to try and keep this as to the point as possible, um, and so much so that I'm actually following notes today, which I don't normally do, but um, usually my podcast is quite a short and sweet rant about something. And today I wanted to be a little bit more businesslike and give you something a bit more a bit more tangible because this is a really important topic. So I'm talking about the power of the pivot. Um, and if you've been in the small business entrepreneur world for a while, you'll definitely have heard the term pivot. It's really just about making a change in your business when things aren't going wrong. And I think the formula for getting things right in the long term is balls plus common sense. Um, yep, yeah, I'll say that again. Balls like actual balls, girl balls, if you like, if you're a girl, and common sense, because I think you've got to be really super brave, have a lot of backbone to do the things that we do as small business owners, but also, you know, that there comes a time when the stubbornness stops being um, something that helps us and it starts to become a hindrance, because if we're stubbornly beating our head against a wall that isn't going to budge for us, then at some point we do have to bring in the common sense and say, okay, it's time to change something. So, yeah. Have you ever really, really effed up in your business? Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have, and I certainly have too, and I'm happy to hold my hands up to that one. Um, and I think it's important to talk about this because we all eff up. And here comes Iggy. So if you're listening to this, you might have heard a squeak. If you're watching, you can literally see Iggy on my laptop right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's a great example. Things don't go to plan, do they? So, and I think, I think effing up is part of our growth as entrepreneurs as well. I think it's really important that we do mess up because if it was too easy, we'd never learn anything. We'd never stretch ourselves and we wouldn't have lessons to leave for the next generation either. So there's a lot of positivity to be gleaned from it. But, you know, Tony Robbins, rah, rah, personal growth aside, I think we also need to be real about the struggles. When something doesn't go to plan, and I think my last launch is a great example I face-planted, then, you know, we have to really think about what can we do to save ourselves and our business. I was, um, I effed up last time because, probably because of a lot of things, but mostly I'd got myself really burnt out, which is something I've talked about previously. And I was so tired that I almost gave up on business. I almost gave up on my dream. Almost. Almost, but not quite. I'm still here. So eventually, the last hurdle, I just, um, just before giving up and accepting a full-time job for a, a big corporation, I stopped. I had a bit of a sense check and I was like, Sarah, what are you doing? This isn't you. So I scraped myself up off the floor and I made a plan B. And as entrepreneurs say, I pivoted. So the pivot is powerful because it's not giving up on our big dream. So the overarching goal to be our own boss, to run our own business, and in that niche market that we want to serve that goal's still there but this is about having the backbone or the balls or the girl balls and the common sense to pull the plug on the bits of the dream that aren't working so not pull the plug on the whole thing but just to cut out cut out the dead wood basically and um i really think like there's a bit of an idea that it's noble or romantic or in some way really sort of fancy in a pride and prejudice pulled up kind of way to just go down with your sinking ship and um I can see where that comes from but at the end of the day you've got bills to pay and mouths to feed and you've got adult responsibilities so you have got to keep the bills coming in now at my lowest point I started to believe that I would only be able to keep the bills paid and the money coming in by signing my soul over to a big company and working for somebody else um, you know, that's when I was really on the verge of giving up. And I'm not knocking that if that's how you roll. If you're a career person and you would rather be a part of somebody else's bigger business, that's absolutely fine. But if you're listening to me, then I'm sure you're probably like me and you're not, you're not someone that can work for other people. You're someone that has this 
deep burning to work with themselves. So for an entrepreneur, letting go of your dream to be your own boss is like, I think it's like pressing the mental health self-destruct button. It was for me, I'd almost given up on life, to be honest. Um, and I, I really, for me, I can't think of much worse than looking into my future and not seeing a vision of myself running my own business and being in charge. It's, it's a really important values thing for me. So back when things were really tough for me, which was only a couple of months ago, I had to find an alternative solution to my lack of cash flow. And really, it meant making choices, um, some tough choices. I had a lot of juggling balls in the air, different type of balls now, and some of them had to be kept up. So keeping the roof over my head, feeding the mouths in my house, that sort of thing, that was essential. Um, and some of those balls were non-essential things like pursuing the part of the dream that wasn't really working for me, the, the launch that had failed. So I had to let them drop. This is about making smart choices. And this is where my formula for success being balls plus common sense really comes in. And this is really about the common sense angle. So almost took a day job, didn't quite uh, in the last the last moment before I did give up. Uh, an old client of mine came back to me and said, hey, got a new business to launch can you can you get on board and help me so I've taken that on and that's a big contract that helps me with the the essential juggling balls the paying the bills and the feeding the mouths but it doesn't take all of my time and it doesn't suck at my soul like a corporate job would so I'm happy I'm still being entrepreneurial still my own boss I'm working with someone fantastic who I know and trust and I learn a lot from as well that's a great thing about freelancing so if you do find yourself in the need of regular paying work because the business plan isn't working out. Freelancing for someone more experienced than you, amazing way to learn, to get a bit of mentoring as well, fantastic, and you get paid for it. I'm a huge fan of that. So I've gone back to doing a bit of freelancing. And with the time that I do have left to work on my business, I'm recovering from my burnout now, I'm getting my energy back, and I'm just really focusing on, okay, what went wrong last time? What can I fix? How can I reapproach this launch that I messed up last time? And sometimes you need to try things a few times before you get the right solution. Sometimes, you know, if you haven't got enough experience, you have just got to learn the hard way. So if you've got a product or service that you're trying to launch or a business as a whole that you're trying to get off the ground and things aren't selling, I promise you there is always a reason, always. So my advice, is to take a step back, borrow a fresh pair of eyes from a trusted colleague, because when we're when we're looking at our own business, we can never look with as much perspective as we'd hope. Um, you're emotionally attached to your business and you're too close and you can't see the gaps. You can't see what you're missing. A friend will, particularly if they're a friend that understands small business. So if it can be a colleague, even an ex-client, you know, someone that's business minded, if you can get them to look at what you're trying to launch and say, hey, why won't this work? What am I missing? You will get really valuable feedback. Don't be proud. Ask. You know, this is this is your lifeline. You know, ask people. Figure out what needs to change. Um, maybe your offering is great, but you haven't marketed it well. Um, and if the right people don't hear about it, nobody will buy it. So, you know, if, if you decide that's the case, then don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If your offering is great, your offering is great. Stick with it. Believe in it work on your marketing. Or maybe your offering isn't what your customer needs and you're stuck here. So then the answer is market research. Go to your typical customer avatar and find out what they need. Make a little survey online, poll them in a Facebook group, literally ask people one-on-one, -on -one. find out what people want. You know, that's, that's like number one to identifying the market space for your business. And then sometimes it's neither of those two things. It can just be a pricing issue. If you price yourself too high, you price yourself out of the market, but maybe you've priced it high because you can't afford to run it any cheaper. So there's something wrong there in the operations that you need to fix. And if you price it too low, um, you're not conveying value. You're not valuing yourself or your product. So why should somebody else? So try comparing and contrasting to other similar things that are out there and see what a good price point feels like. And then, so I suppose... A really obvious answer for coaches and a lot of my clients are coaches 
is that they struggle to make enough money from one to one because selling your time one to one is not a scalable business model. It very much caps you at a maximum earning potential. If you sell one hour of your time for one hundred pounds, then you know, you, and you, you'd sell twenty of those a week. You can only, you know, you know, there's a limit. So, if you find that you're not making enough to pay for your lifestyle but you can't put your prices up because that prices you out of the market, then the answer is to change the model. So instead of one-to-one, something more scalable, group coaching, workshops, live events, online courses, online groups. There are so many things we can do these days. So ask around, do some market research, ask some trusted friends and colleagues who are business-minded, find out what your customers want, and then back to the drawing board and make it work for you. So um, I just want to add to that as well, um, a couple of things if you're really stuck right now financially, like your cash flow is done and you can't pay your next month's rent or mortgage, in there by the way, um, there are a couple of things that absolutely saved my life when I first launched my business and I didn't have enough clients. And these won't be great for everyone, they're not totally universal, but they're, they're quite interesting ones and I want to share them because there will be somebody listening to this that it will help, it won't help everyone. Um, but it will help somebody. So if you're that somebody, then here we go. Um, So number one, I used current skills in a new way. So for example, I was launching uh, a business as a marketing consultant. I do marketing, I do a lot of content, a lot of writing. I didn't initially have consulting clients beating my door down. Sad, right? Um, But that's (laughs) the case for everyone when we launch. It takes a while to to build up that momentum. So in the meantime, I was using my content writing skills to help in a different way. I put myself on a website called fiverr.com, that's F-I-V-E-R-R.com, and I sold my digital services remotely. So somebody would log in and find me through a search and I was advertising that I would write your, your blog post, your content marketing, your email marketing, your website copy for you know a certain fee. I'd, I'd design my packages, set them online, and people would contact me and say, yep, want to book that? Off you go. And I'd do the job remotely, I'd submit it, and I'd get paid through PayPal. And you know it didn't take long to clear either. And my payment was guaranteed because I was using that third-party site called Fiverr. You do take a fee, but that's to be expected. But oh my goodness, the relief of doing a job quickly, getting paid quickly, and not having to chase an invoice afterwards really saved my life in the early days. And the other thing that I did that really helped me out was I got creative with where I worked from. So if you're working on your laptop, you know that all you need is power and Wi-Fi connection, maybe some coffee. So a lot of people even work from coffee shops, which is really not conducive to getting lots of work done. It's noisy and I don't personally like it very much. So something I used to do when I was struggling for money was I did pet sitting. So I put myself on a few different websites and there are lots of them now. And people would book me to come and stay in their house while they were away on holiday and I'd look after their pets. And all I had to do is, you know, feed a cat, walk a dog, big deal, didn't take much time at all. But then I got all day to sit in their house and use their broadband and work on my business. And it was actually, it was lovely. It was like getting a little holiday at the same time. I got to see different parts of the country. I um, had a really lovely time. So, and I know that's not for everybody. If you've got a young family, then there's no way at all. But I know some people listening to this will be exactly like I was two years ago. And I hope this helps you. So, but overall, I hope that what I've shared today has helped everyone to some degree, because there all comes a point where we need to stop reassess and change that old entrepreneur pivot don't be afraid of it you know when it's time to change balls plus common sense equals success i will speak to you next week bye for now Mm -hmm.